Yeah. OK, that's not going to happen. Please mind the gap between the train and the platform. The ramp doesn't come down because it's been screwed down. Yeah, that's too high. I'll get off at the next stop. We called it No Go Brink, a radical plan not just to use interactivity to crowdsource material, but also to help a section of the population lead the strategic direction of our story. And lead it they did, for until we started we hadn't appreciated the scale of the problem of accessible transport or the well of frustration in the disabled community. We've just been to Cockfosters and I can't get off the train there. I am now we're heading back to Heathrow Airport one and a half hours later. <laughs> Paralympian Dame Tanny Gray Thompson kicked off our investigation with her story of getting stuck on a train. I was left on a train at midnight, so I ended up having to get out of my chair, sit on the floor, which is not a kind of terribly pleasant place to sit throw my chair off the train and then crawl off. We asked for major social media interaction around a Twitter feed, dedicated Facebook page and the NoGo Britain hashtag. The debate started online and stories came flooding in, including Julie Thomas, a Welsh former head teacher who went blind three years ago. You might be able to see that the footpath actually finishes here, so you've got a grass bird. So if you want to take a bus, you can't get much further no, than here? not on my own. But our growing band of tech-savvy disabled people were determined to change things. And from across Britain, they drove our coverage as we reflected their anger in a series of reports. In April, for the first time ever on television, disabled transport users took part in an innovative mass Twitter trial. This was 24 hours on the buses and trains told to us via social media. We were inundated. Within hours of tweeting their morning's journeys, two of them were sitting in the Channel 4 News studio. You literally bump your way down the stairs and hope somebody will help you carry the chair. Yes, um, it's a fairly common occurrence. I do it on the National Rail and also my local tube station is inaccessible. This was about empowering disabled people to lobby for change. As they argued their case in news reports, the major ongoing digital project saw us build a highly engaged online community of disabled people who remain vocal and active today. It was a truly interactive project that didn't just reflect lives by broadcasting their stories, but allowed the people involved to drive forward the wider issues. We wrote a mini manifesto based on what disabled transport users told us needed to change. The stories, generated online where the debate still rages, informed our big studio discussion when three contributors confronted transport buses live on air. Most of the buses in the northeast of England aren't flat and when they are, and when they aren't, we're told to wait for the next one to wait for the next one. This might be okay in the summer, but when it's cold in the winter, I'm not as, phys I'm not as physically able as you. When I get on and off a bus, nobody tells me where the, where the first available seat is. That's something very, very simple. That doesn't require any, mess any, you know, any money. It requires tra training of a bus driver. By 2017, uh, the whole... Audible gasp from Zara. We live in 2012, mm. not 2017. I know, but... The series brought about real progress. While many still fight for better access, the campaign helped thousands of disabled people put pressure on transport bodies and change policy for several transport firms, including the bus company in Judy Thomas's area of Bridgend. It also led to Transport for London pledging that ramps put in place temporarily for the Olympics would be kept across London's tube network. And in November, the Transport Select Committee announced it will investigate whether the law is working when it comes to transport for disabled people. We're really, really proud of No Go Britain. Its impact was greater than anyone anticipated. People in journalism often talk about harnessing social media to break new ground in news. But sometimes this interaction is not always that meaningful, doesn't always shape the journalism itself. With No Go Britain, though, it really was meaningful, and we believe it's the sign of things to come. And still the stories come in. The interactive community of disabled Channel 4 News viewers will be a lasting legacy of No Go Britain. They continue to exert pressure on policy and influence the programme. Our latest investigation, driven by them, we're calling No Fly Britain. And with their input, we're already affecting change. It's been a unique and extraordinary project. In its scale and our commitment to it, but also as a way of showing the emancipatory potential of interactivity involving a group of people whose voices are usually silent.